it's Anna. I am looking down at a pair of mushrooms uh, that are poisonous and very common. So I want to give you a, a couple of tips and pointers for how to identify them uh, and recognize them in the wild. Um, again, both of these are abundantly common and they also look similar to some popular edible mushrooms. Uh, we are at the very end of October 2020. So appropriately enough, I have the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. Um, the common name for this, or <laughs> the Latin name for this is uh, Omphalatus alludens. Uh, there is a West Coast relative as well in the Omphalatus genus. Um, the uh, mushroom won't kill you, but it will make you very, very sick. And uh, so it's, it's definitely on the uh, absolutely to be avoided list. Um, so again, there are some mushrooms that will um, attach to your bile acids and run through your liver and shut it down. Omphalatus alludens isn't one that will do that, but it will make you violently ill. Uh, so it is much to be um, respected, if not feared. So identification is fairly simple. Um, however, you know, sometimes people do mistake Omphalatus alludens for uh, chanterelle mushrooms. So I'll show you uh, the differences between the two. Um, once you get to know the two mushrooms, they don't look very similar, but if you uh, read about them in books or if you look at a picture of one and they're not side by side, uh, it can be uh, confusing. So Omphalatus alludens is a cap and stem mushroom. Uh, they often take on these sort of uh, flowery type of fruiting bodies. Uh, they are bright orange and they grow in clusters. And so that's a really important identification feature. Chanterelles don't grow in clusters. You will often see them like twinned or even uh, triplets that are attached at the base. Some of our uh, North Carolina chanterelles do that, but they don't come up in these sort of like really, um, you know, clusters of four or more individuals. And oftentimes you'll see, um, you know, fruitings of jack-o'-lantern mushrooms that are massive and, you know, six to 20 uh, mushrooms in all. So, um, you know, besides that clustering behavior, you'll see them uh, growing on wood. Uh, sometimes you'll find them growing on the ground, um, and that is essentially them growing on wood that is below the surface of the soil. So they are a wood decomposer, and um, you know, unlike again our chanterelles, which are um, you know some of them are are partially decomposers, but their primary lifestyle is to associate with a tree or plant partner. But these dudes are just decomposers. So uh, they are orange, but bright orange. Uh, our chanterelles are more of a golden color. The thing that people get uh, hung up on besides, uh, you know, the coloration is uh, the gills. So, you know, uh, when you have mushrooms, a lot of them have gills that are very separate from the cap. In the case of Omphalatus alludens, you have what's called decurrence, and so that's uh, the gills running down the stem. Um, so, you know, that is a distinguishing feature also for chanterelles, so you just need to be mindful of that. Uh, the gills on Omphalatus, however, are like real uh, mushroom gills, so they're kind of deep and blade-like. On a chanterelle, they'd be more uh, like wrinkles, they're false gills. Um, so those are the, uh, you know, primary uh, differences between the two. Um, another thing that is, is very helpful is that uh, Omphalatus mushrooms have a very like uh, robust and stringy stem. And so, you know, the outside is a little bit leathery. When you're dealing with chanterelles, they are also solid, but it's much more like the consistency of string cheese. So if you were to slice one of these open kind of, uh, you know, laterally, you can see I had to really pinch the outside to get to the middle, and the middle is the same color, and it's also, again, kind of stringy. Um, in the case of a chanterelle, if I chopped it open, you would think I was looking at, um, you know, a uh, string cheese snack. So uh, interesting thing about Omphalatus alludens, besides all of that, it's called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom because it is bioluminescent. Um, you know, you have to be kind of lucky and also, uh, you know, have good eyesight uh, in order to detect it, but the gills can uh, glow a light yellow, or excuse me, a, um, you know, a light green color. And so, uh, hence their name. And then one final thing, they smell bad. Uh, <laughs> and I can smell them right now. I've just shredded them, so there's, um, a pungent aroma that I would not detect if I had chanterelle mushrooms that I was uh, fiddling with. So do not eat uh, Omphalatus alludens, it will make you very sad. The second one that will also make you sad is even more common and you'll find it absolutely everywhere, uh, especially in grass and lawns. And so 
unlike some mushrooms that are everywhere, but they're growing in the forest, these dudes are super, you know, they're conspicuous. Uh, another um, habit that they have is they form in uh, large fairy circles, or sometimes you'll see arcs of them, of lots of fruiting bodies. And so, uh, you know, they really do attract a lot of attention. The name of this mushroom is Chlorophyllum molybdites. Uh, the common name for it is uh, the green spored parasol mushroom. I like to call it uh, the green gilled lawn boob. However, that is maybe um, not something that I want to popularize. Okay, I'm lying to you. I think it's really funny. I did not come up with it, but um, I think of that every single time I look at chlorophyll chlorophyllum molybdites. Reason being that they really do have a, the, one of the most distinguishing things about them is that they do look like a boob and they have this sort of areola thing on the top. That essentially is just sort of a scaly surface. And so, you know, you have uh, parasol mushrooms of a variety of types. Uh, and there are different genera um, represented, but all of them have this sort of scaly surface. And um, most of them, you know, including this particular species, often start out uh, on the white side, but they turn a buff color. They do grow quite rapidly, and they start out in this little um, sort of... Um, it looks sometimes like a chess piece, sometimes like a little bowling pin, but they very rapidly open and uh, expose the gills. Now the problem with um, the uh, Chlorophyllum molybdites is that the green gills are not necessarily evident, but this is your identification feature. And so, you know, the uh, edible parasol mushrooms, so you have some Lepiata mushrooms, they're delightful. Uh, but they have white gills, sometimes cream-colored gills. But uh, chlorophyllum has like these really uh, pickle green, gross-colored uh, spores. And so after you know a pretty short period of time when the mushroom opens, the gills will go from pretty uh, stinking white to this uh, really sort of uh, ochreous, you know, um, Oscar the Grouch color. And uh, so you know that is a really important characteristic. Another thing that this specimen lacks is a ring on the stem. So uh, these dudes typically have a felty ring on uh, the stem uh, that, you know, is, is basically protective tissue that covers up the little baby mushroom and when it pops it leaves this um, annulus is what it's called. Um, but this is actually a really good example of a mature, um, you know, pretty uh, iconic specimen of this species, but it's been damaged in some way so a feature is missing. Uh, so, you know, super important to uh, verify to um, you know inspect very closely you can see a little bit of the remains of where that ring was I have no idea what happened to it um, but uh, you know again with parasols you're really um, distinguishing things are cap and stem a little bit of uh, scaliness and uh, with younger specimens sometimes these scales look especially for chlorophyllum look like um, the uh, shavings from uh, a brown colored pencil. So, you know, you have this like booby shaped thing with, uh, you know, um, pencil sh shavings on. Uh, anyway, this one will also make you very sick. It won't kill you, but it will make you barf and um, the other end too. So you should definitely avoid it. Um, however, I think the cool thing about them again is the fairy. Oftentimes it's hard for me to explain the magnitude of um, mycelium to people. But when you see a fairy ring, that's the outer limit of the mycelial mat. And so, you know, oftentimes you'll see these and they're like 10, 15 feet in diameter. And so people are like, you know, I, but, um, you know, I don't fully grok what you mean by that. And I'm like, well, look at that thing that's about the size of five cows in your front yard. Um, it really does kind of um, amuse me. Uh, and again, mushrooms that form rings are really good for that because they show you, again, the edge of where the organism lives. Anyway, I've gone on long enough. Uh, don't eat these dudes, you will see them. Um, they are quite beautiful and good for uh, photography in my opinion, but uh, not for the dinner table.